Karen's dad is really wealthy. When he dies, Karen will get a lot of money. I think she might get around $100 million. Isn't that amazing? I'm so excited. When Karen gets her money, I hope she'll take me on a vacation. That would be so nice. Maybe I'll even ask her to buy me a car. James, what about you? I've always dreamed of getting a really fancy gaming computer. I wonder if Karen would buy me one. As they chatted excitedly, they didn't notice the look on my face. On the other side of the door, I held onto my purse tightly. My name is Karen. I met my husband James at a social club for people who work. We became friends quickly because we both liked the same things. We were happy together every day. One day, I got a surprising call from my mom. She said, Karen, your dad has collapsed. What? My dad was always cheerful, cracking dad jokes, and he seemed healthy. He ran his own company smoothly. It was hard to believe he collapsed. Worried about him, I left home right away and took the next train to the hospital my mom mentioned. My dad was incredibly kind. Even with his busy schedule, he always made time to play with my brother and me. He was a wonderful father who loved carrying us on his shoulders. I remember how emotional he got when I read a letter to my parents at my wedding to James. It's a memory I'll never forget. So hearing that such a loving man collapsed was hard to believe. When I got to the hospital where my mom was waiting, she turned to me. Mom, how's dad? Is he okay? Karen, please stay calm and listen. My mom looked at my dad lying on the bed with his eyes closed as she explained. Dad had collapsed suddenly at work and was rushed to the hospital. Despite many tests, they couldn't find anything wrong, and they didn't know why he got sick. More tests might find out what's wrong, but they could also make Dad feel worse, my mom said. I decided to stop the tests. It looks like your dad will have paralysis on one side of his body, so he's going to need a lot of care. Yeah, that's right. Even though she seemed worried, my mom stayed calm. My mom has decided to take care of dad. I could feel my mom's strength, but I was also really sad that my dad wouldn't be the same. Just then, my brother burst into the room. How's dad? He asked, out of breath. Mom explained dad's condition to him, just like she did to me. Mom, you can't take care of him alone. I'm nearby. I'll help. Thank you, but focus on your own life. You have your own family to take care of. My brother agreed, saying, I understand. My brother got married before me and now has a four-year-old daughter. I'm the one with more free time since I don't have kids yet, but it takes me an hour by train to get home. Even though I'm far away and it'll take time, I won't leave everything to you and mom. If anything changes with dad, tell me right away. Karen, did you tell John you're here? My brother suddenly asked, reminding me that I had left the house without letting John know. Seeing my worried expression, my brother said, you should call him, John must be worried. So I hurried out of the hospital room to find a quiet spot to call him. When John answered, he asked, Karen, where are you? I was so worried. Hearing John's voice calmed me, but I couldn't hold back my tears as I explained that my dad had collapsed and needed care. John was shocked, your lively dad, but he spoke gently to comfort me. I felt grateful to have married him. When I told him I was coming home, he said softly, I'll make dinner, just be careful on your way home. It seemed dad would stay in the hospital tonight. My mom and brother were also heading home, so I decided to go home too. When I got home, John had prepared my favorite meal. It must have been tough. Have something you love to cheer up, he said, pulling out a chair for me. His kindness brought tears to my eyes. John usually stays calm, but he's incredibly caring when I'm feeling down, which always touches me. After thanking him for his comfort, I went to bed early that day. The next morning, feeling a bit better, I told John that I wanted to help take care of my dad sometimes, and he agreed happily. Also, it turned out that John had informed his parents about my dad's condition, and they offered to help with chores while I was away. I was surprised and grateful to receive such support from John's family to assist with my dad's care. When I called to thank them, John's mom chuckled and said, Your dad is like family to us. 
You don't need to worry about a thing. When John's parents arrived at our house with smiles on their faces, asking how they could help with chores, I was surprised. They, like John, are usually calm and composed. Before I got married, I thought they were a bit distant, but maybe I misunderstood them. I kept thanking my husband James and my in-laws for their support and for taking care of my dad. My dad used to talk a lot, but after the paralysis on his left side, he couldn't speak well. Luckily, he could still write since he was right-handed. He communicated with us by writing on a whiteboard. Even though he was mostly in bed, he lifted our spirits by drawing funny pictures and writing dad jokes. My brother also came to help but it was mostly my sister-in-law who assisted. With her experience as a caregiver, she patiently taught my mom and me how to help dad. We were worried that my sister-in-law might not want to take care of dad since he's not her blood relative, but she didn't mind at all. She happily said, your dad has made me laugh so much. Now it's my turn to make him smile. Seeing her enthusiasm made me realize that my brother had married an amazing person. My brother may have a great spouse, but I'm not falling behind when it comes to having an amazing one myself. My whole in-law family supports me in taking care of my dad. Every time I go to help him, they ask how he's doing, and I'm really thankful for their care. But then I realized it might all be a misunderstanding, just by chance. One day, I left the house to go see my dad, but when I got to the station, I realized I forgot my wallet. Feeling annoyed with myself, I went back home. Usually, when I went to help my dad, my in-laws would pitch in with chores, so I thought they'd find it funny that I forgot my wallet. I went inside, got my wallet from my room, and went back to the front door. That's when I overheard a conversation between James and my in-laws in the living room. So, Karen's dad isn't going to pass away anytime soon, huh? I'm getting tired of waiting. Hmm. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I stopped in my tracks, wondering if I misheard. Quietly, I tiptoed closer to the living room door and pressed my ear against it, listening carefully. Anyway, how much do you think Karen will inherit when her dad passes away? It doesn't make sense for us to be nice to her unless we get a big share. Her dad is really rich. She's probably going to get more than 100 million, right? Wow, that's amazing. I can't wait. When her dad passes, I hope Karen takes me on a vacation. That'd be nice. Maybe I'll ask her to buy me a car. James, what do you want? Their conversation filled the room with excitement. On my side of the door, they probably had no clue about the expression on my face. I gripped my wallet tightly, feeling a mix of anger, frustration, and sadness. Careful not to make a sound, I quietly left the house my mind swirling with emotions. I headed straight to my parents' place. If I thought my in-laws were being unusually kind, now I realized it was all for the sake of money. My dad's inheritance was significant, but I couldn't bear the thought that my in-laws were eagerly waiting for his demise. Unable to clear my mind, I sat on a bench at the local station near my parents' house. The echoes of James and his family's laughter replayed in my head. I can't forgive them. Never. They're all foolish, just laughing away. I made a silent vow to seek revenge on James and my in-laws, who only saw dollar signs when they looked at my loving father. Despite hearing their greedy conversation, I played along, pretending I hadn't heard a thing whenever they asked about my father's health. I maintained my polite demeanor and thanked them as usual. I decided to take advantage of James and my money-hungry in-laws as much as possible. I spent more time caring for my father and dumped household chores on them without hesitation. My in-laws, eager for their share of the inheritance, gladly complied with my requests. I noticed their faces tense up sometimes, but I paid it no mind. About a year later, my father's condition worsened. Though the doctor assured me it wasn't urgent, I felt relieved. However, I informed James and my in-laws that my father's condition might take a turn for the worse soon. It seemed like the news they had been waiting for, evident from their barely concealed grins. With a calm demeanor, I handed them divorce papers and said, Thank you for all you've done. Please, let's get a divorce. James and my in-laws were stunned. 
but I continued with the lines I had prepared. So James, mother-in-law, and father-in-law, you were all after my father's inheritance, weren't you? I heard everything. Mother-in-law wanted a vacation, father-in-law wanted a new car, and James, you wanted a gaming computer, didn't you? I can't stay with people who seem to be waiting for my father to die. The looks on your faces just now were truly ugly. It's like I could see your greedy thoughts of getting money when my father passes away. As I spoke, my expressionless face seemed to frighten them. My in-laws were frozen, and James, holding the divorce papers, was in shock, opening and closing his mouth. I had no reason to stay in that house anymore. You can send the divorce papers by mail, but if you don't, I'll get a lawyer. Please do it within a week, I told James before getting up. I grabbed the luggage I had prepared earlier and left our home. During the train ride back to my parents' house, I felt the gentle sway of the seat. When I arrived, my parents were there waiting for me. Since I had already told my mom about what happened, she hugged me tightly and said, You did the right thing. It was the first time I cried in my mom's arms like that since I became an adult. The next day, James and my in-laws came to my parents' house. I decided to stay hidden and see what would happen. When my mom opened the door, James and my in-laws were kneeling outside. We're here to apologize to Karen. There seems to have been a misunderstanding. Please, let us apologize properly, they pleaded. Misunderstanding? My daughter overheard your conversation. It seems you've been eyeing my husband's inheritance. I don't want to have anything to do with people like that. My mom sharply dismissed them. James persisted, pleading to see me again. I can't let you see her because she doesn't want to. What she wants isn't your apologies, but for you to fill out the divorce papers. Have you done it? Hand them over quickly, my mom insisted. Please just give me one more chance, James begged, but then the sound of a cane tapping caught everyone's attention from deep within the house. We all turned to see my father, leaning on his cane with the help of my sister-in-law. James looked shocked to see my father in person for the first time. With a whiteboard in his hand, my father had a message for James. It read, I won't let my daughter stay with someone who can't make her happy. Divorce her immediately as she wishes. The message, written strongly, seemed to hit James and my in-laws harder than anyone else's words. They finally realized there was no point in arguing further. Slowly, James and my in-laws stood up. I filled out the divorce papers. Here they are, James said, handing the papers to my mother. He promised to let me know once he filed them with the city hall. And then my mother sent him and my in-laws away. Emerging from my hiding spot, I said, Thank you, Mom and Dad. My mother smiled gently while my father chuckled and wrote a message on the whiteboard. A father's duty is to protect his daughter until the end. Seeing those words, I couldn't help but cry. Despite his paralysis, my father remained the same kind and caring person. I had initially thought he had changed, but he proved me wrong. He was still the dependable father who always put me first. Dad, I hope you live a long time, I told him tearfully, and he responded with a grin. Since then, James has returned to his parents' house and seems to be living quietly. As for me, I've adjusted to taking care of my father while managing work. It's a busy life. But remembering how my father always made time for us when we were young, my brother and I never feel burdened by caring for him. Despite being half bedridden and losing weight, my father's laughter and love for dad jokes remain unchanged. My sister-in-law also finds joy in caring for him, and we're able to lead a peaceful life together.